Okay, so I've just picked up a base model M1 Ultra Max Studio. So this is the version with 64 gigabytes of RAM and the 48 core GPU. Now I'm gonna be doing a ton of testing on this device over the next few days. In this particular video, I'm just gonna have a quick look at editing and how exactly this particular machine and the M1 Ultra chip might impact your editing workflow. So let's start off with some DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna look at a multicam timeline. Now here's the footage that I'm gonna be loading into this timeline. You can see all the different cameras there. So Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K, GoPro Hero 7, and two separate Sony A7 cameras, the A7 Mark III and the A7S Mark III. Both of them shooting in 4K 25 FPS, uh, XAVCS codec, and the A7S III is shooting at a 140M bitrate at 422 10-bit. Now this is usually a very difficult codec to play back uh, on your computer, so we're gonna see how this M1 Ultra chip can handle that. And quick note on that particular codec and bitrate, you actually can't shoot that on a normal SD card. You have to go out and purchase a special card just for the camera to be able to record it. Now I am using DaVinci Resolve in this particular video. I usually would use Final Cut Pro for my videos, but I think DaVinci Resolve is a good overall program and it's also easily comparable to Windows. So if you are on a Windows computer, this should give you a good idea of maybe how the performance might differ. And also don't forget guys, DaVinci Resolve can take full advantage and it's fully optimized for the media engine and the video encode and decoders built into Apple Silicon chips. So here is the multicam timeline that I've set up. Now it is 20 minutes in length, as you can see. Uh, we've got four different streams of 4K footage. This is the GoPro. Uh, this is the Sony A7 Mark III. This is the Sony A7S Mark III. And then the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K shooting in ProRes 422. Now this particular timeline is in 4K. As you can see, I have it set to 4K, also 25 FPS. I do have some color correction applied to these clips. I'll just jump in there. Nothing too crazy, just some curves and some basic color wheels. And if we jump back to the timeline, uh, I have everything up here switched off, so I'm not using any kind of optimized media. I'm not using proxies in this video. Everything you see here is straight out of the camera. They haven't been transcoded either. Uh, so I've got proxy mode set to off, uh, render cache is none, and fusion memory catch is off. We will check out some fusion in just a second. So if we jump down to the timeline and we make sure we're in multicam view, which we are, and I hit play, you can see immediately everything starts playing really, really nice and smooth. Uh, the FPS counter up there uh, is 25, it looks good. Um, all the 4K streams are playing back in real time with no issues. If I come over here and I zoom into the timeline and I do some scrubbing, you can see we have a couple of dropped frames, but really not that many. And again, guys, this is all compressed 4K footage uh, with really hard codecs to actually play back. So XAVCS, for example, is not the easiest codec to play back in real time, but that is working pretty well. And again, if I hit the space button and we play straight to 25 FPS, no issues at all. Now you may have noticed up the top here, I do have some B-roll. This is again from the Sony A7S Mark III, highest bit rate, uh, 422. 10-bit uh, color, and that is playing back zero issues, uh, as well as all of the 4K streams on the side. Now scrubbing, again, little bit of a delay there, but if you sort of, if you zoom in a bit and you slow your scrubs down a tad, it's working pretty well. Now moving on to some fusion, I'm not gonna create anything custom on this video, it's gonna take too long. Uh, here are just some fusion transitions that I downloaded a while ago, they're pre-built. Um, so I'm just going to drop this on and I'm going to put it on that particular uh, part of the timeline and we're going to come back and we're going to play and as you can see that's working perfectly fine with no issues. If I zoom in and I scrub, now remember guys this is really really compressed H.264 footage that's playing back in real time uh, with zero issues. So let me remove that one and let's find a little bit more complicated fusion transition, drag that on. Okay, so that one is a little bit less smooth. Uh, we can still scrub relatively easily, but when it comes to real-time playback, um, you're still gonna get a couple dropped frames, but that is better than the Intel i9 12900K PC that I've been testing against this particular machine. That machine can't do that. This does seem to be doing a pretty good job. Now, one of the reasons why this is playing back so well is because of all of those extra video encoders and decoders built into the M1 Ultra chip. Now. All of this footage is either ProRes or H.264, which means it's gonna play back really, really well. So how about some 8K footage? We'll take a look at that next. 
Okay, so here we have some 8K RED RAW footage from a RED camera. Now, all this footage is actually downloaded from the RED website itself. And I did that because if you guys wanna do this testing on your own machine and see maybe how it can compare, you can. Um, so I've made a timeline here, very, very simple timeline. Uh, some minor color correction applied, um, nothing too crazy. You might not be able to see that uh, on the camera. And again, I'm gonna jump down to the timeline. We're gonna play this back in 4K, 24 FPS first of all and we'll see what we get. All right, so we can see we're stuttering a little bit. Um, we're seeing that red FPS indicator. If I skip forward, it's a little bit jumpy at the start, but it does get relatively smooth uh, once the clip has a second or two to start playing. Again, guys, this has not been transcoded. There's no proxies or anything like that. Uh, it's just straight out of a red camera, uh, and it seems to be playing back okay. Now, if we do some scrubbing here on this shark scene, apologies if any of you guys are afraid of sharks, didn't mean to choose this clip on purpose. Uh, that's playing back okay uh, with the biker scene. Some dropped frames here or there, but um, I could probably edit this if I really had to. Uh, the monkey scene, that's playing back okay. Now, I don't think a lot of people are going to be doing an 8K raw timeline like this. Um, at the very least, you're probably gonna be transcoding it or using proxies, uh, or you will just be using 4K like I think most people do. I think only a small percentage of people uh, have full 8K raw timelines, but I think for this, it's pretty usable. So if I just jump in here and I change the timeline resolution to 1080p, and we click save, and I'll just get rid of that second one. Okay, that's playing back pretty well. So you can see that's much more responsive, switching between uh, all these different clips and then playing in real time. Okay, for this last test, I'm back to the Sony A7S Mark III, and I have some 120 FPS 4K footage from the camera that I'm just gonna drop onto the timeline here. And we're just gonna try and play it back and see what kind of FPS we can get. So if I just hit the space bar here, uh, we are getting very, very close to the 120. You can see it's a little bit choppy there. Uh, but again, this is 120 FPS playing back in real time. Uh, if we do some scrubbing here and I zoom in, definitely getting some dropped frames. Zoom in a bit more. Um, but that is playing back pretty well. Now, don't forget, this is playing back in 4K, uh, so you would probably switch that timeline down, and that is working pretty well. All right, let's just do something crazy, and let's actually come here, and we're gonna change the clip speed. So let's double this clip speed to 200%. Uh, now, why would you do this? I don't know. Uh, maybe you'd be doing some kind of time lapse or something like that. There are better ways of doing it. Uh, this is really just to stress test the M1 Ultra trip. So if I play this back at 200%, that is playing without any issues. Uh, it seems even smoother than it was before. Uh, I'll zoom out and go to a different part here. Some more movement. Uh, we are getting some drop frames. As you can see, we're getting that red sort of warning light a little bit here. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's just get out of that for now. And I am gonna be doing a lot of render tests on all of these different timelines you've just seen. I will leave that for a separate video. I just wanna give you guys a brief idea of what the editing experience is like in case you're on the fence right now and you wanna pick it up ASAP, the M1 Ultra version, because last time I checked, they're sold out for I think about two months at this stage. So don't worry guys, more videos are coming if you're still on the fence. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.